Hi, welcome to Home Farm and a quick tour of our new utility room and how we renovated it. We live in a Welsh farmhouse that was built in around 1850, so it's quite a period historical building. And so we wanted to make sure that we stayed within that kind of farmhouse design and mm -hmm. interior. The previous um, utility room was not only dysfunctional, it was really dark. Mm -hmm. um, everything, or all of this basically was <laughs> positioned that way, which is on the wall behind you. And that's kind of in a really dark alcovey kind of area, which we've now put the washing machine in the fridge in. So it was just a really unpleasant utility room to work in. It was also really dated and old and damaged and we yeah. just really needed it to be revamped and refreshed and just made to look clean and functional and become a real nice welcoming space part of the house. So the first thing I did was basically sketch out the room and the space and just jig things around. So I made a measurement of the space put it down as a kind of a bird's eye view and then just kind of put in like where I wanted the washing machine, where I wanted the fridge, where I could fit in uh, cupboards yes. and a sink, etc. And just played around with that for a few months. And then we did go to a couple of kitchen um, kind of companies yeah. where they had the designers that sat there and gave you free sessions. And we sat with them because we were genuinely yeah. thinking about actually purchasing the mm -hmm. cupboards from them. So it was really helpful to go in there and give them measurements and talk through some of my ideas. So I would strongly recommend you do that and um, even do it more than once. I, we, I think um, we had three different companies, three different sessions, and it was really useful because every person had their own interpretation or idea of what the utility room should be. And, and how could they move stuff around, right? So in yeah. terms of, the, we've got pretty big appliances, so we always knew that they were supposed to go on this wall, but it still was still interesting. Some people try and interpret it slightly differently and mm -hmm. try and put them on a different side. Mm -hmm. So it was just good to get those different perspectives and what's so nice about those sessions is that obviously they have the 3d kind of um uh, yeah. software on their computer so you know it takes it off a pencil and paper sketch mm -hmm. which you know is obviously really flat and it allows you to actually physically see yeah. it on screen and so have almost have a little bit of a walkthrough we then decided that actually we were going to do a lot of it ourselves uh -huh. so we then had to just rip out the old utility room mm -hmm. that was quite fun <laughs> I mean, there were a lot of tiles and things, so it, it was actually quite easy. Demolishing stuff, as we found out with our bathroom upstairs, is actually quite easy to do. Yeah. Uh, one, once it's all removed and you've got a plain canvas to work with, that's when we made decisions with regards to how, we, how much of that work we're going to do ourselves. So I was initially a bit tempted to try and do the plumbing, but then I just thought, no, hang on. You know, once this is behind walls and uh, where all the pipes are hidden, it's best to get professionals to come in and do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did get the plumbers to come through. They basically re-ran a lot of our pipes, the waste pipe and the, the, the water pipes for this tap. So we decided to move the fridge and the washing machine over to this side and for them to be next to each other. The one thing that I really, really knew I absolutely wanted was I wanted to raise our washing machine, <laughs> which here in the UK is almost unheard of. Just about everybody I yeah. told this idea to kind of looked at me like I was a little bit balmy, didn't really <laughs> fully understand or what the purpose of raising the washing machine was. Um, but in America, it's actually quite common. And the reason for that is that it's just become more accessible. So you don't have to bend down, you don't have to kind of bend down and get on your kind of um, all the way to the back of the washing machine to get those kind of last socks out. It just becomes more accessible, easier on your back and much easier to put loads in and out of the washing machine, especially when it's a front loader. And then that also creates you a little space underneath the washing machine. In America, it's quite um, often the case that they'll kind of stack their washing machines and tumble dryers, or if they do have a space underneath and they just have a washer tumble, dryer then underneath they'll put drawers and obviously that would have been fantastic but we could not find a company right. at the time who could actually offer us the same company that would do us the kitchen cabinets would actually be able to customize a um, door drawers underneath there so we basically just decided to make it a cubby hole and actually put it in as a pet feeding space so that became a bit of a diy project for us i mean as you said they could have given you uh, some sort of drawer to actually put it on but this washing machine is incredibly heavy so we wanted something that was a lot more robust uh, and that would actually take when it was actually drying or actually moving around to actually take that weight. So we just made a little frame, put the, some, I think, 18 mil ply on top of that, put some varnish on that because it, the, the varnish is actually quite a good tip from somebody that we know, purely because if you do get a small leak, the actual varnish will prevent the water from actually dripping through. Uh, once that was all done, we then uh, <laughs> got our muscles out, picked up the washing machine, and we're able to put it on the base. Also for the added peace of mind to make sure that we don't have any yeah. leaks or, or drips coming out of the washing machine in the future, 
We also got an Eve water guard, uh -huh. which is a very, very useful device. And you just, it literally is a cord with a sensor on it and you just plug it in behind the washing machine and then thread it underneath the washing machine and it just sits there dormant. And then if there is ever a leak or the washing machine kind of starts pouring water out everywhere, the device will immediately yeah. sensor that and send you a notification to your phone saying you've got a water leak. And Kirsten really wanted a shelf so that she could keep her baskets on there. So we've got a solid oak shelf to go in keeping with the rest of the house because a lot of our doors and floors are all made of oak. Uh, we got the uh, actual shelf from Celtic Timber. What was really convenient about that is that they were able to actually cut it to size for us to the thickness that we want and actually beveled the front edge. And it's rock solid, so you know she's got the, the light baskets on there. But if we ever wanted to keep anything heavier up there, it's got more than enough strength to do that. And then I wanted to keep this space above the washing machine empty and clear. Didn't want to put any shelves there mm. because this is where I put my washing baskets. When I come to the washing machine, I put my load inside the washing machine and then I keep my basket on here ready to go when I need to empty it again. So it's a really convenient space as well. So as Mar said earlier, we did have tiling on that side uh, previously by the previous owners. I'm not a huge fan of tiling. Mm. I try and, set, try and avoid it because I'm not a huge fan of cleaning grout or grouting. And I just think it kind of becomes really messy over time. Um, also, neither of us feel particularly confident in actually oh, putting no. tiles up. <laughs> so, um, so I just decided we just avoid that altogether. And instead, uh, we would finish the walls off with some nice paneling, wood paneling. We actually went with a MDF uh, water resistant. Uh -huh. Uh, paneling which is like a marine kind of um, MDF uh -huh. and it's just really nice because it just avoids any damp areas or damp issues going forward and it's just really so super easy to install it comes in sheets and lengths so you can buy different heights and um, you can put it well we were obviously went on the vertical but mm -hmm. you could I suppose do it on the horizontal yeah. if you want it to be different and then we just finished it off with this uh, trim at the top which was really nice and it just is in keeping with the, the whole Victorian farmhouse feel. The colour palette that we use throughout the farmhouse is from a Farrow and Ball um, colour palette but we do colour match to that so everything we've used in here is mm. a Dulux trade paint um, and it's normally the diamond one because it's washable yeah. and we really like it it's a really Really good quality paint. The walls are windborne white and I think that the panelling is the ammonite. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a really nice colour palette, very neutral, very soft and just works really well if you've got a lot of kind of the warm colours of the oak coming through your property. Then we built a box to hide the water and waste pipes. Because we already had the oak windowsills and the oak skirting boards, we went to Celtic Timber and we ordered another custom piece of oak from them. It arrives as a, as a plain color. You can actually get them to color it for you or stain it for you, but we already have the Osmo product that we've stained a lot of the other oak throughout the house. So we did that. Now everything matches and consistent, and I'm just really pleased with the way that it's turned out. So this side was really important that it looked attractive and aesthetically pleasing because where you are positioned as the camera, that is the, in the doorway to our kitchen. So when you're walking through the kitchen, this is what you see, which is why another reason why I was really pleased mm. to put the washing machine in the fridge on that side because it's, it becomes part of the kitchen and it is something really nice to look at. You know, we can put the flowers here, put some pots and plants here, put some pictures up and just make it look a really nice attractive space. I just kept it really simple. I wanted the cabinets to match what we had in the kitchen. So I just went with a really nice chalk white. And then with the backsplash again, I wanted to avoid tiles. So I just went with this single panel backsplash, which is really lovely. It was actually an off cut that we had left over from when we did a master bathroom reno a couple of years ago. So it's just really nice to be able to use up surplus um, supplies yeah, and materials that we had left over from other projects. The other nice thing about this backsplash is that it, the Carrera marble finish it just works really nicely. It's very nice and neutral and it works really well with the worktop that we chose. With worktops, there are quite a lot of different options that you have. You can go laminate, you can go with quartz, granite, um, even Corian. So there's lots of different types of things available. We specifically chose the quartz because it was most durable and hard wearing. Mm. And for me personally, I use the utility room every single day, multiple times a day. And this is where I'm doing kind of my most intensive working so I'll be you know polishing shoes scrubbing um, doing the <laughs> silverware polishing all sorts of different things and if I'm gonna be knocking or bashing things around yeah. it's probably gonna be in here and on this worktop so I really need something that's gonna really be able to withstand that kind of work for many years to come 
We've got two nice cupboards up at the top to just house um, various different cleaning items. Then Mars very kindly made me this rail up here, which is really super useful because it allows me to be able to do any hand washing of delicates and then put it on a hanger and then just hang it above here, which is straight above the sink so I can just drip dry really nicely, really safely, and I just really think it's a nice feature. And then underneath the cupboards here, quite simply, um, extra storage space yeah. under the sink and another cupboard here. Um, the one I do like is the one at the end. That's an actual pull-out cupboard, and I specifically did that so that I could have all my laundry detergents, laundry liquids that would just pull out, and then when I'm right next to the washing machine, I can just simply pour it straight yeah. into the washing machine and then put them back in and just slide that back, as opposed to kind of going into cupboards and and trying to you know dig around yeah. at the back to try and get the vanish or whatever it is that you're trying to find so it's just a really nice feature and I do I'm really glad that I went with that pull out cupboard there and then for the sink there's so many different size sinks you can go with I would actually have loved to have gone for like a 70 75 <laughs> centimeter really really wide sink but quite honestly this was the biggest size I could go for giving me still space on either side of the sink for drainage so I went with this, I think it's about a 55 centimeter one. We'll put it all down yeah. below, put all the links below. Um, but it's a nice thing because it's extra deep. And I would really recommend if you're looking at something for a utility room to consider the depth of your sink. Because if you're similar to me and when you do a lot of like either flowers or flower arranging or anything like that, or even if you've got like, for example, a small pet that you want mm. to wash in the sink, um, then having an extra deep sink is really good. Most sinks are kind of like 20, to 25 centimeters deep. Um, this is a lot deeper than that and it really is brilliant because it gives me a lot more space to be able to get really tall vases in there and wash them out and turn them over and rinse them really easily. And then the tap I went for was a cross water tap. We've actually gone through quite a number yeah. of different brands since we've been living in this property and renovating different rooms. And the last uh, big renovation we did was the master bathroom and we found that actually cross water was yeah. by far the best taps that we could find at a reasonable price point. Um, and they're just really good quality with regards to not leaking, not dripping, and staying, still staying shiny and clean. And the mixes are fantastic on them, to be honest, because we've, we've bought some mid-range type of shower stuff in the past, mm. and the mixes have just been very poor, but the crosswater mixes have been absolutely fantastic. And so we went with the cross water for here as well. And it's just one of these pull out and you can extend it. And then you've got the shower um, button on there as well. So you can choose different, um, whether it's just a stream or a shower. Mm -hmm. And I actually do find it very useful. And especially if you've got a deep sink or a very large sink, it's very useful to have one of these because it allows you to actually pull it closer to inside the sink mm -hmm. and rinse the sink more easily. So really pleased and that's just really nice the fact that I can actually completely move the tap out of the way and then I have full access to the sink area in the basin. So I really do think that um, that I was really pleased with that choice. In order to bring a little bit of extra tech and lighting into the actual utility room, uh, we put Eve strip lights underneath all of the cabinets. Uh, that's really cool as far as I'm concerned because it allows you to do adaptive lighting, which means that this utility room can get a bit dark with adaptive lighting very tacky is that as the day gets darker, the lights get brighter. As it gets brighter outside, the lights get darker. Uh, so, you know, I've really enjoyed having that little bit of uh, smart tech in the utility room. Yeah, and it's just really nice with the Eve strip lights that, you know, you can actually go on your app and actually go yeah. through the rainbow wheel and actually choose what color you want. So you can go really cool or really warm depending on what you're, you, makes you happy. So I prefer a little bit warmer, but as Mars said, it's just really fun. And especially if you're gonna have like, I don't know, a Christmas party or something and you yeah. really wanna go wacky with your lights, you can. So it's just a really nice feature and just very low wattage. Very low wattage and they're on a schedule. So they basically they come on whenever we need them to do. So they come on in the morning, go off uh, late at night. Mm. Uh, and we're also gonna uh, modify things a little bit more. So if we have to come down at five o'clock in the morning in the winter when it's pitch black, I'm gonna put a little motion sensor in. So the motion sensor, as soon as I walk in, it's gonna trigger the lights. I can feed the cats and go back to bed. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. We're more than happy to let you know whatever information you need. And we hope to see you on our next video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.